Welcome to episode 10, 12, Stuart Butterfield, Nine Lessons. This is an outline of episode 10, 12, lesson 1 to 5. This is lesson 6 to 9. Lesson 1 from Dharma Butterfield to Stuart Butterfield. His parents named him Dharma Butterfield. His hippie mother, Norma. And his hippie dad, David Butterfield. Oh, I really wanted to be normal. And um, for some reason, I thought Stuart was a normal name, like Mike or something like that. <laughs> and uh, Stuart's a, it's a pretty bad name. Like... Lesson two, start young. To teach yourself to program at the age of seven. Um, I, computers were just so cool. And even, like, you know, you see now any three-month or six-month-old is just drawn to the iPad in a way that... Um, Seems like it must be indicative of like a lower level brain function that was hijacked in order to, to be attracted to this. In three, he has two degrees in philosophy. 1997 now. You're armed with two philosophy degrees, but you decided to become a web developer. And two degrees, both in philosophy. First in 1996, then a master's degree from Cambridge University. As in four, he created Web 2.0 precursor in Flickers in 2002. As in five, he's a serial entrepreneur. I checked, he started no less than six businesses, and two had succeeded. They were Flickr and Slack. So keep on trying. It's Lesson six, Flickr was created out of desperation. Started uh, a company to build a web-based, massively multiplayer game. A never-ending game. Yeah. It's it called... was literally called Game Never Ending. Exactly. Um, and this is 2002, um, and we just couldn't do it. So uh, it, we ended up making Flickr, which was, um, you know, obviously like a big turn. So in the wreckage of the dot-com bust, you basically started Flickr by accident. Yeah. What made you see that Flickr could be something? Desperation. Lesson uh, 7, Slack also came out of a computer game called Glitch. I realized I don't, I don't believe it can work anymore. So the next morning, I told the board and I told the co-founders that we, ha we have to shut it down. While that was happening, we were thinking, like, what do we want to do next? Because we all wanted to work together. And we all also realized we would never work without a system like this one that we had developed inside um, that the company that was making Glitch, maybe that's something that other people would want. Lesson eight, he invented workplace collaboration. Everyone else sees, and here everyone looks at the same thing. And the really important thing is um, you can see across the organization, you can see what your colleagues are doing. The amount of information that's accessible is uh, profoundly increased. You don't have to read it all, but when you search for something, you can find it. Uh, these are all the channels. Because there's a place that people can go and look or ask their question, the uh, friction in communication is reduced by orders of magnitude. Lesson nine, business cycle and business beneficiary. Slack is a huge beneficiary of coronavirus crisis. And the fate of the world and, your fate of, and the fate of your company seem to be moving in opposite directions. It's really interesting. I was born in 1973, so that was stagflation. Uh, my father was a real estate developer, and so in 1982, when uh, interest rates went to uh, 18%, like every other real estate developer in the world, he went bankrupt. Uh, the dot-com crash, I personally held shares in Lehman Brothers um, over the weekend that they went bankrupt, and um, I've been through a number of these cycles. The uh, severity and the asymmetry of the economic impact is really interesting here. So, you know, obviously a lot of businesses felt it up front, travel, hospitality. You know, some businesses, I guess, like ours, actually saw the, uh, an increase in um, customer activity and in, in, in sales. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, leave your questions and comments below. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.